guys want to go ahead and stand up, we'll go ahead and get started. We have a hymn-heavy morning this morning, and I could not find hymnals for a reasonable price, so we're still going to have words on the screen. So we'll get there, though. Yeah. 
here in the power of Christ, all stare. Awesome. Welcome to Traverse. Good morning. Uh, I've done this a couple times in the past. It makes some people uncomfortable and some people love it, so you'll find out who you are pretty quickly. Uh, you're going to grab one or two people next to you, maybe three if you're feeling crazy. Uh, and I want you guys to tell each other about a way that God showed up this week in your life uh, that you hadn't expected, or maybe up until this point you hadn't realized. So I, uh, the story that I'll give is we were reading a C.S. Lewis book in college, and the, the line that came out was, there are two ways to look at life. Uh, one is to see nothing as a miracle, and one to see everything as a miracle. So as we we're doing that, I uh, cooked my eggs in the morning, and I dropped a shell in right as the entire, like, white of the egg turned white and I couldn't find the shell. And I was like, oh man, that's going to be crunchy and a bummer later on. And I was sitting there and I was, I was reading my Bible and I like go to cut into the egg and the, the like, the shell just like pops out, like right onto the other side, like off the plate onto the table. And I was like, okay, so that's pretty cool. So there's your little like, there's a way to see everything is a miracle. So I'd encourage you guys to share with each other the way you guys have seen God show up this week. Got two minutes. Go. see God show up, or even if we don't see God show up, uh, our call is to joy, uh, and our call is to faithfulness. So we're going to sing It Is Well With My Soul.
Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray, find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I The crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. something for you guys. It's a, called a welcome box, and it's got swag, stuff about what we believe, and there will be someone there that you can ask questions of. So if you go out to the welcome hub out in the lobby, uh, it will be there. Over to Patrick. I felt like that was a news broadcast. Weather, over to you, Roger. <laughs> Thanks, sports anchor. You did great. Awesome. Hey, my name's Patrick. I'm the lead pastor here. We want to welcome you to Traverse. 
uh, whether you're joining us online or on site today. Uh, man, there's a lot of kids that just left this room, man. That is awesome. So good. A uh, couple of things uh, real quick before we get uh, into the message. Uh, I'm going to do announcements uh, because at the end of this service, we have a baby dedication. We're uh, three babies. Three families are dedicating their kids unto the Lord today. We're super excited about that. We also have uh, at least one baptism. Uh, so Katie Reeves is going to get baptized, so we're so excited for her decision to do that. And uh, so, yeah, that's coming up. So with that, uh, let me go through announcements real quick, and then we'll get into the word here. So giving, there are four ways to give through the app, through online. Uh, you can give uh, here in person or uh, via mail. So uh, however we can help you with that, we want to say thank you for con your continued uh, blessing of the church financially so we can move the mission of, of making Jesus famous uh, to the ends of the earth, uh, of, uh, an opportunity for us to do. And so we just want to say thank you, thank you for that. Uh, next, crews. Uh, crews are our small groups. We want to create more opportunities for you to connect relationally with other people. And so... Uh, uh, I'll just be honest, guys, the, the girls are kicking our tails in this area. we got like, I don't know, a thousand ladies Bible opportunities. And uh, so we're adding two more men's groups coming up. So Justin Turnbull is right here. Justin, uh, yep, he is starting a study tomorrow night on the book of James at the Ice House. So if you have uh, questions or want to know details, Justin would love to talk to you. Uh, starting the first Sunday in June, Sunday nights, I'm going to be starting a crew at my house. And uh, just put up a dart board and we're going to throw darts and we're just going to have some relational conversations I want to create a space for guys just to hang out and be guys. Um, we're bound by duty and responsibility, guys. And uh, you know what? One of our core values is to have fun, and we're going to have some fun together. So uh, that's going to be open for the guys in the church as well. Next, uh, we want to watch your kids. Parents' Night Out is on May 14th from 5 to 8. It is a fundraiser for our children's ministry. And, uh, and this is so good because today uh, we're in our series, and we're talking about dating. And dating is just not for single people. Dating is for married people as well. And so the timing is good. Uh, it's going to be a fundraiser for our VBS. So uh, if you have kiddos and you're looking for a three-hour window to uh, go shop or go on a date or whatever, we want to watch your kids. If you have specific questions about that, Des and her team can help you out with that. Lastly is our Traversing with Us class. If you are new or newer or have never attended this, uh, this is a class designed uh, to uh, talk about our mission, vision, and values as a church and then answer any and all questions that you might have of the church. And so it's important that you register today. I've got to order food tomorrow. Um, and so if you plan on being there, we want to feed you, hang out for about an hour, hour and a half or so, no longer than that, I promise. Uh, and it's a great way to meet new people as well. All right, real quick, two quick things. Number one, uh, 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 praise. Uh, the praise is what I've already shared with you. Uh, baby dedication is today. We have a baptism. Uh, and I've been thankful all week about this. I can't stop thinking about it. We've got some amazing young families in this church. Uh, and we've got some uh, amazing families that are raising their kids under the Lord and having spiritual conversations with them. And so I'm just excited uh, for today. Uh, the prayer that I want you to be praying about, the elders and finance team, we have a meeting on Wednesday night at 5 and at 6. Uh, so just prayers for unity and for uh, just clarity on some next steps with the opportunity or potential uh, looking at a permanent facility location uh, for us as a church. And so uh, nothing has been signed, no offer or anything, but we're just looking at next steps. So continue to pray for us as we walk down uh, that path. All right. Cool. All right, today we continue our series called Love Song. Uh, we're looking at the Song of Solomon, and it is, I think, probably the eightest greatest chapters in all of Scripture. Uh, last week was week one. We looked at the art of attraction, what makes someone attractive, um, and we talked about it looks, uh, godly character was the first thing that makes you attractive. It's what's inside of you. Uh, then we talked about uh, the, just building trust in a relationship, and that's done through just sharing your insecurities. Uh, too often we start dating, we want to share our resumes and tell people how awesome we are, and that's not where relationships are really formed. It's in saying, you know what, here's where my shortfalls are, here's my blind spots. I'm just like, this is who I am, uh, and those things. Uh, the third thing we looked at is setting a high standard when it comes to sexuality and saving yourself for marriage, and how uh, this lady says that in the text. It was a beautiful text that we looked at in chapter one. Uh, and then the last one is to encourage one another, constant encouragement. And so one of the questions I ask you to ask of your spouse or the person that you are uh, courting dating is ask each other, how can I encourage you? Uh, I, uh, we had that conversation before I left town, and Hannah says, how can I encourage you this week? And I said, I have one of my prescriptions that is not filled. Can you just go pick that up? That would encourage me like you have no idea. I, there's not enough of me to go around. I got to get out of town on Wednesday morning and get back Saturday night. And so she did that. So thank you for encouraging me uh, with that. And um, yeah, so uh, this week we are going to look at the art of dating. 
Uh, next week, I want to give you a heads up. We're going to look at chapters three and four. It is a wedding day in the honeymoon. So we are going to uh, talk about the S word, uh, and it has a letter that ends in X. And so I just want to make you aware of that. It will be PG-13, I promise you. Uh, I spoke with a parent after the first service, and she said she's having conversations, her and her husband, with their third grader. And I said, good for you, because we need to have these conversations sooner than later. The reason they're having those conversations because some things their boys had heard at school that are not accurate. And so, uh, parents, I just want to let you know we have to have these conversations sooner than later. We can't wait till they're 13. By the time they're 13, they're going to start teaching you things. And you're like, oh, really? That's how that works? And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, we've got to. And so they're getting missed information. They're not getting godly counsel from their buddies uh, who heard it from their older sibling who heard it on the swing set and all that stuff. And so we've got to have these conversations. And yes, they can be uncomfortable. They can make you have panic attacks. Uh, but here's the deal. God has entrusted these kids to us. And so we're going to have these conversations. And today we're going to talk about uh, dating. All right? So uh, dating is super important. Uh, uh, in your, uh, as you're single, but also uh, in your marriage. And so uh, open up your Bibles to chapter 2 of the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, and we're going to get right into it. So the first thing they're going to see is this season of anticipation. When you're dating and courting, you're single, oh man, there's this anticipation. I get, to, I get to see this person that I'm interested in. And that's what we see right here starting in verse 8. And this is what it says. <clears throat> it says, Ah, I hear my lover coming. He is leaping over the mountains, bounding over the hill. My lover is like a swift gazelle or a young stag. Ladies, I want you to write in the text, taking notes, uh, not the word stag, but you can call him stud. That is what she's saying. That's my stud. Look at him. He is amazing. And so she sees him for afar, and he's uh, coming up over these hills. She continues and says this, There he was behind the wall, looking through the window, peering into the room. Here's what I want to let you know. Number one, he is not a peeping Tom, okay? That's what it sounds like. You're like, this is kind of creepy. Most likely, she's in a courtyard. There's some lattice that is there, and he is looking for her. This is the season of anticipation. And if you can remember when you were dating, or someone, uh, maybe not you spoke dating earlier on in your life, and you just remember, I just want to see this person. There's like this anticipation. If I could just lay my eyes on him, or I can just see her. And when we were in college, I would try to get to the cafeteria early, and uh, Hannah's dorm was on the west side of campus, and she would walk right in front of the windows and it was like me peering through the windows like oh man here she comes this is gonna be awesome I can't wait to see her and that's what this guy's doing he is anticipating too because he's fond of this amazing lady so verse 10 says my lover said to me rise up my darling come away with me my fair one I want to show you this picture. Uh, in 2018, my wife and I had an opportunity to go to Israel, and uh, we went from the Sea of Galilee south to the Dead Sea. We floated on the Dead Sea, and then we went into Jerusalem. We had to read a couple of books leading up to the trip, and it was kind of a guidebook. And one of the things that said in this area that we were at um, is that these ibex, this is an ibex, like a gazelle, this is a stag, and this is probably what they're referring to in the Song of Solomon is this particular animal here. And uh, we were reading about, we're like, man, it'd be so cool if we could see one of these stags. You know, I'm a hunter, and if you're a guy, you're like, you just want to see a big buck, or you want to see that big moose. And I wanted to see this stag, right, this ibex, because I'd never seen one. And all of a sudden, there was this uh, group of uh, little ones just running, and it was like Discovery Channel. It was awesome. Like, so the bus slowed down. We're looking at these big windows, and here they come just running up the side of the hill, and then comes this big alpha male stud stag, and he did just this. He got to the top of this hill, and he just stood up there, and he's like, yep, I'm here. I have arrived. Like, oh, we saw that, and it was this amazing, amazing moment that we got to lay our eyes on it, and they're beautiful creatures, and that's what uh, that is being described in this text, that, uh, man, I want to see him, so there's this anticipation, he's trying to get a glance, and what he says in verse 10 is really this, that I want to go on a date with you, go away with me, go on a date, and I want you to know that dating is not just for single people, it is for married people as well. Do you know the number one killer of intimacy and romance for couples is? It is called marriage, okay? It is called marriage. Duty, responsibility, kids, and man, next thing you know, well, when's the last time I have had a date with my spouse? Dating your wife, dating your husband is so, so important. And so, uh, parents, I want you to write these down. If you're single or if, if your parents, write these down. Uh, I want you to know that dating, um, there's three things that you need to limit yourself when it comes to the area of anticipation. 
And here's why. So when Hannah and I were dating, um, we were friends first semester, the end of 94, beginning spring of 95. Uh, we started dating. So leading up to that, I kind of did the full court press thing, right? I mean, she's cute, and man, I'd eyed her. I'm like, man, I, I, yeah, I said, oh my gosh, right? And so when you do that, guys get kind of silly and stupid, don't we, guys? We do dumb things. And so I thought it'd be cool because we had one class together. What if we register for classes and then we take all of our classes together? That's a bright idea, right, guys? That's what we think in the moment. So here's the deal, guys. Don't do that. It's so dumb. Just don't do that. Don't look like you're needy, okay? You got to play hard to get two, all right? I'm going to try to help you in this courting thing here, all right? But, man, I was like full court press. So we went and we sat down and we filled out all of our, our classes that we were going to have. And, man, I was just so excited. I get to see her not just in the afternoons or whatever, but I get to see her like all day long. And so she's really smart and wise. And so what she did, uh, she uh, left there and then erased all of them and then picked a whole different bunch of classes. And so she went and registered, and she's a collegiate athlete, and so was I. So I had baseball practice, and I didn't get done until like 6, 6.30. I went to the registrar's office, and I went and registered for all these classes we picked out together. And guess what? All those classes were full. So I had to pick all new classes. Guess who was in all of my classes? <laughs> yes, this anticipation. I wanted to be around her. And so then I told her, I was like, oh, can you believe it? We're not going to have any classes together. And so she just like, yeah. And she's thinking, oh, my gosh, she's in all of my classes now, right? Yes, like you want to you wanna see her, take a peek at him. You just want to be around each other. There's this something in this courting relationship that is just like, ah. So I tell you this because there's three things that you need to limit during your time of anticipation or courting. Number one, it is time. It is time. One of the fears that I have, you see these people, they start dating, and they, they get rid of all other relationships. All of them. This girl who had some girlfriends, this boy had some just boys that you guys used to hang out, and they like we don't see him. He's like they're just doing their thing. And I want you that is really, really unhealthy. It's really unhealthy. So parents, if your kids are courting today, be mindful of the time they're spending with this person. Okay? There's times we have told our son he's in a dating relationship. Like, nope, uh, Sam's not coming over tonight to hang out. You can go hang out with your buddies, go play frisbee golf. You gotta go like go hang out with you. Like we we we're walking with him in this. Okay, that's important. So that's the first thing, time. The second thing is talk. How do uh, single people talk to one another? The phrase that I hear often is, I love him or her. I'm like, y'all been on one date. Like, you have no idea what love is. And then you set this bar so high and there's this expectation. Now you're glued at the hip, you spend all the time together, and we feel like, well, he or she said, I love you, so now I'm pressured into this. And really dating and courting is just really about getting to know the heart of this other person. Okay? So you've got to limit uh, the things that you say in a dating, courting relationship. And the third one is touch, okay? Touch. I'm going to talk more about this uh, in just a moment, but these are the three things. Just really limit on uh, the time, the talk, and the touch uh, if you're in a courting, dating relationship and you're not married. Okay, number two is the season of preparation. So we've got the season of anticipation. Now we move into the season of preparation. And this is what it says here. It says, look, the winter is past and the rains are over and gone. The flowers have sprung up. The seasons of singing birds has come and the cooling, cooing of the turtle doves fills the air. The fig trees are forming young fruit and the fragrant grapevines are blossoming. What time of year is it? Spring. spring. When spring is in the air, what is in the air also? Love. love. Yeah, the ladies jump right on. They're like, love, spring is in the air, right? But what comes before spring? What season? Winter. winter, yes. And we think uh, winter is a time of dormancy, and it's really not. And so if you're single and you're not dating, courting someone, I want you to know, okay, because it's probably a time of preparation for you. That's in the season when there's pruning in your life. That's a season when uh, the Lord needs to fertilize your heart. And so like today, I'm going to go home. I'm going to fertilize the grass again because we're supposed to get some rain. Uh, a couple, about a month ago, we we're still in, quote, winter time. What did I do? Uh, I went ahead and pruned some trees. And the reason I did that is so things can grow and be healthy. And we have to do that with our heart and our mind for relationships, to be prepared for a season when the love does spring up. I am ready or you are ready. And so that happened to me. It was the summer of 1995. I was in all these classes with Hannah, and she just loved me. Okay, I, st I annoyed her then. I, I annoy her now. But uh, So we, we had to go home for the summer. She went to Colorado. I went back to New Orleans where in the suburb that I grew up in. And so we only got to talk to each other one time a week. There was no cell phones. There was no uh, instant messenger. There was none of these things these kids have where instantly they can talk to friends, girlfriends, people of their day, all the time, like constantly, all the time. And so for three months... We got to talk to each other one time a week for one hour. Thursday nights, 8 o'clock. That's it. 
because we had this thing called long distance. Do you guys remember that? Long distance rates? You had to wait till late at night because the rates were better at night. And so we had to talk on long distance and that's all we got to talk. And so it was this time of really preparation for me, to prepare me. And so I worked 40 hours a week for the general contractor. I got a side job with one of the foremans on Saturdays putting roofs on houses. It was awful. Sunday, I went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and I did that for three months. Wash, rinse, and repeat. And it was a time of pruning. There were some things that I did in high school. There were some friends that I hung around that I just didn't need to when I went back home. And so I didn't do those things. God was like pruning this stuff, saying, nope, I need to prepare you in this season of dormancy, of win or not dormancy, but a time of preparation. So when love starts budding for you and Hannah, you're going to be ready for this. And that's what I did, man. I worked and I worked and I worked. And I knew this summer and the, the following summer I was saving because I'm going to buy this girl a ring, man. It's happening. I, she doesn't know it yet, but it's happening. And I just knew that I knew that I knew. And so I just kind of kept my nose to the, to, the, to, the, to the ground and just kept working. And just God was pruning on me. And he was fertilizing my heart. And he was doing something uh, inside me. And that was so important for, for me. So if you are in a season of winter, I want you to embrace this season. Students, if there's any students in here and you're not dating or courting someone, I want you to know it is okay. It's okay. We have all these outside pressures that, well, there must be something wrong with me if I'm not dating someone or someone doesn't like me or why didn't the boy ask me out? Why hasn't the girls asked me out? It is okay. Use this season. Parents, this is a season for us as parents to continue to speak into our kids, prepare them. Like, what if we spent more time preparing our kids, our, their minds and their hearts to be a godly man or a godly woman to prepare them for a marriage for a lifetime for someone? I think that's more important than how good they shoot three-pointers, don't you? Or how good they are at acting or how well they play a musical instrument. Now, those things are good. We spend a lot of times on those. But what if we just said, you know what, I'm going to be intentional as a parent in this season of winter. My kids aren't yet dating and let, let's speak that into them. Let's prepare them for that. All right, next thing is uh, to pursue intimacy. That's what we see next. So men, women, listen to me. Men, when I say intimacy, you think one thing. Women, you think another, okay? It's what the ladies think, guys. They are right, we are wrong. Can I get an amen, ladies? Amen. Yes, preach that, brother. That's right. But next week, guys, oh yeah, next week, bring your friends. Okay. <laughs> It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. All right. Okay, so uh, this is all about intimacy, and this is what this young man says to this lady. My dove is hiding behind the rocks, behind an outcrop on the cliffs. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is pleasant and your face is lovely. He is pursuing intimacy. He doesn't mention a body part. He doesn't say anything about her hair color or her eye color. He says, your voice is beautiful. Your, uh, your face is amazing. And he's this, uh, saying that you're this little dove and up in a, a crack of this cliff. And he's, she's hiding back in there. And he's like, no, come here, sweetie. I want to spend time with you. I want to be with you. And it has nothing to do with sexually. It's about intimacy. Intimacy literally means into me you see. That's where they get the word, into me. Remember when you were dating and courting and he or she was into me, you see? We used to ask all these questions. And what are your likes? What are your dislikes? What's your favorite music? Where did you grow up? And then we get married and intimacy is gone and we don't have these conversations anymore. Is that right? It is one of the most difficult things that you will fight for in a marriage is intimacy. Where you feel like he or she is into me. It is hard. You feel like, well, I know all the facts, guys, right? I know everything. I know her hair color. I know her favorite song. Uh, I know that thing that happened in fourth grade or like all these things. Like we know them. And so we feel like we've asked all the questions. Listen to me. If you're married, intimacy is talking about the dreams of the future of what you want together as a couple. Hey, when our kids graduate, what is the next season of life for us? That is intimacy. And your spouse will share things. With you. Oh, you want to do this? Oh, yeah, that would, yeah, let's talk about those things, future things together. And it's all about intimacy. And so uh, intimacy is really about transparency. See, guys, we talk mainly in facts, and then ladies talk in feelings. Um, several books that talk about that men talk with blue megaphones and women have pink hearing aids and vice versa. Girls, you may have a pink megaphone, and we have these blue hearing aids, and our colors don't match up, and it's so hard sometimes. And so when your spouse, men, ask you, hey, how was your day? She doesn't want to know the facts of your day. That's not what she wants. She wants to know, how did you feel about your day? And you say, well, this first appointment, I was really frustrated and mad at this person because this coworker drives me crazy, and that's what she wants to hear. She doesn't want to know yet at 8 o'clock they was talking about some project you're working on. 
That's the truth. She literally wants to know how you felt about your day. Ladies, give us a little grace. We have lived this day, and for us to rehash it sometimes is just not fun, okay? Like, mm, it was okay. It was a day. We got it done. I'm moving on, right, guys? It's hard. And so we've got to find this balance. Somewhere we've got to find some, like, purple hearing aids and a, and a purple megaphone so we can blend these because ladies are so fact or, uh, feeling driven and guys are so fact driven and we've lost the ability to be intimate with one another and so that is something that we need to do so I uh, had the opportunity uh, we went to a friend's uh, birthday party uh, two uh, Saturdays ago it was awesome and so Jolene down here turned uh, 39 again no she said 40 she did and it was her 40th birthday party a lot of people there co-workers friends it was great and we got to sit with a whole bunch of people we don't know which is like my love language I'm like oh this is awesome we're sitting with people we don't know and had a great time and so there was a couple there uh, that is a co-worker of Dan her husband and they had shared with us that they had not been on a date without their kids since 2016 what I looked at Hannah I was like what did I hear that correctly yes oh my gosh listen to me I don't care the ages of your kids you have to date one another find a grandparent a a friend a neighbor uh, leave them with the hamster like they are going to make it okay parents you don't have to like helicopter these kids they're like rubber bands yes they'll stretch but they'll come right back to the same size when you left them I promise you know Hannah and I we leave enough food and water out now we just go for a couple of days like we're out of here but we're in that season of life where we can do that and there's many of you you've got these kids and whether you're uh, bottle feeding or nursing or they're young and they're tugging at your pants all the time so how do you date your spouse in those seasons where you can't physically like got to get away you've got to create space for you for you okay when our kids were young, I would literally stand at the kitchen and put my hands against the walls, and Hannah was behind me, and I'd tell them, go, get out of here. Mom and I are making dinner. And they would go to the room. And if they tried to come back in, nope, you got to get out of here. And I would cut, and she would cook, and she was the head chef, and I was the sous chef, and that's how we just had a date. Any time that you spend alone is a date with one another. Hannah and I like to walk our dog together. That is a date. We get to talk. Actually, she does all the talking, and I do all the listening. And so it's just walking and talking. And that's a way for us to date one another on a regular occurrence. Uh, getting in the car and driving somewhere. That is one of our best spaces to date. And the reason is, is because we're not thinking about the laundry that needs to be changed. Or do we need to check on the kid that needs homework? And is the dog bowl empty? We need to fill that thing again. And it's just like, if you're in your home, it's just hard not to be working and doing. And so sometimes you just need to get out of Dodge. And so the car for us is a great place. And so last week, your homework was to ask that one question, how can I encourage you? Hopefully you did that. Your homework this week is go on a date with your spouse. You have to date one another. This is how intimacy is built and continued, okay? Because we are just bombarded with duty and responsibility as moms and dads and business leaders and workers in our communities. And it's just, next thing you know, it's like we don't even know who each other are anymore. And so we've got to do that. <clears throat> All right, next point. We've got to be on guard. We've got to be on guard. So they, he's calling her out. She's a sweet dove. He mentions nothing of her body parts. Says, I want to hear your sweet voice and your beautiful face. And this is what is said is next here, starting in verse 15. It says, catch all of the foxes, those little foxes, before they ruin the vineyard of love, for the grapevines are blossoming. And so here's what's going on. The foxes in that time, it's springtime, the vineyards are blooming, they have these white little flowers on them, and the little foxes, uh, mommy and daddy foxes have had little baby foxes, and these little foxes would come out, and they would literally eat the blossoms off the grapevines. They're nutritious, they've got moisture, and so anything that's like perfect food for a little baby fox, and so they're eating these off, and the, the, the vine master, he would be out there shooing, get them out, we've got to trap them, get rid of them, anything, and if you are going to take care of your vineyard, your relationship with your spouse, if you're married, or your relationship if you're single, there's some things that we need to make sure uh, the foxes don't get uh, in our vineyard. And so if you're married, here, here are the foxes in your vineyard. It is anything uh, that you do not address and sweep under the rug. I want you to think about this with me. If the last time you've had an argument, a fight, it's typically something that keeps reoccurring. It's this little blossom, it's a little fox in your vineyard, in your relationship, and you just like, if we ignore it, it's going to go away. We don't talk about it because every time we do, we blow up into a fight, and this always happens. And when I counsel couples, listen to me, it's usually not earth-shattering stuff. It's a lot of little blossoms that have been eaten off their grapevines over time that has built up and built up and built up. And now we're not dealing with one little blossom. We're dealing with a vineyard full of blossoms that are full of problems because all these little foxes have come in and they've eaten this off of our relational vineyard. Listen to me. Address the problems that you have today. 
those little things. When Hannah and I first got married, one of the things that annoyed her, annoyed her, I mean, it's one of many, but it's just one I wanted to give you today, is I would apparently, apparently, so I've been told, I would get in the shower, but I would leave my underwear on the floor. And it annoyed her. Do you have any of those little blossoms in your house? <laughs> I mean, and we can make laundry lists of all the things, and I can make a laundry list. And you know what we just said? We're just going to address these little things that annoy each other, and we can just tell each other, hey, when this happens, that really annoys me. We're like, okay, let's talk about it. We have a conversation about it, and it's not a defamation of character. I'm not saying she's bad. I'm not, she's not saying I'm bad. It's just something, this just annoys me. And so I, it's important for you to address these little blossoms. Because when I counsel, guess what? They want to talk about 50 blossoms that have been chewed off their vine. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this could have been done like so long ago. Why don't we just talk about it today? And we can only dress one at a time. And so we just got to dress these little blossoms. So if you have any foxes that have been eating blossoms off of your marital relationship, I want you to talk about those. Just have a conversation. Hey, this is something that bothers me. I've been avoiding it because I'm afraid we're going to have a knockdown drag out. Just have the conversation, okay? Now, if you're single, here are the foxes that are in your vineyard. This is what we have to uh, be prepared for. Uh, it's purity. We live in the culture where uh, purity is not held at a high standard. If it feels good, do it. Uh, people cohabitate before marriage, having sex before marriage all the time. It's not just in culture, but it's in the church. And uh, parents, I want you to fight for the purity of your kids. I mean, fight for it. So I want to give you four things that are some foxes that we need to keep out of our kids' relationships. Number one, we need to set the standard high that no sex before marriage, okay? That's the standard. Just like the lady said, she says, do not arise or arise or arise, arise or awaken before the right time. And she's saying till marriage. What if we just set that standard for our kids and we just talk about it in a good and health way and say, you know what? Because next week we're going to talk about it because here's the deal about physical intimacy. It is awesome. It is good. It is godly. It is God designed. It is his plan and it is to be enjoyed. Oh man. If you can tell me if there's anything better than that, please tell me what that is. I have no idea what that it could even come close to because it is awesome. Okay. You should be enjoying that. So number one for our kids or those who are single, we got to set the standard high and help them in that. Number two, keep four feet on the floor. Here's what I mean. Your kids are dating and keep four feet on the floor. So when they're watching TV, they can't lay down and be under the blanket hanging out together, okay? All right? Four feet on the floor. Like my wife and I, last night I got in, I was gone for four days. We were watching UFC fights because when you're married, that's what you watch together. It's awesome. And uh, our feet were on the floor. But if Hannah and I were to start watching UFC together and we're under a blanket and our feet aren't on the floor and one of her soft, shaven legs rubs up against mine... I'm like, man, do you want to MMA wrestle with me? Like, yeah, let's do this thing, girl. Yeah, right? That's just, it is. And so we can help with some of that temptation with our students and our kids that like, hey, no, you're not going to lay on the couch and be sprawled out. Your shoes are off and, you know, we know you're clothed, but that's, it just is not a good environment. It's not a helper to them. And so keep their feet on the floor, okay? That's number two. Number three, keep everything zip tied, twisted button, and Velcroed on at all times, Okay? <laughs> All right? So, it's so much easier to be sexually pure when you have your clothes on. All right? So, their feet are off the floor. Next thing, their shoes are off because they want to get their feet dirty. And then, you know, he, it's summertime. They're both wearing short little shorts and it's a, a little bikini top. And he's got a tank top on because he's been lifting in the gym. He wants to show his muscles and all this. And, like, we are not setting them up to win. We're not. All right? So, dads, you can go out and buy all the turtlenecks for your daughters you need. Go get those things. Stay fully clothed, right? I mean, we just need to encourage that because the culture we live in, if you look at any magazine on any um, banner on a Facebook ad or you go to the grocery store and you see magazines, they're hardly clothed, both men and women. And so, parents, encourage your kids and dress in modest. Let's take a stance on that to help them with that. So, that's the third thing. All right, you ready for the last one? Number four, you keep your tongue in your mouth as long as you can, <laughs> all right? Yes, you start dating and courting and you want to kiss. That's natural, that's good, that's godly. But here's the deal, once you start trading saliva, there's something about that that takes it to like next level stuff. It just is. So my wife and I, we've been married 25 years and when she picked me up yesterday from the airport, I met, she kissed me and we drove home and there was just not like a lightning bolt of excitement from that kiss. <laughs> I mean, it was like, hey, good to see you. How was your trip? When we talked about it, it was great conversation. It was a time of 
intimacy you see, and we talked about, hey, what's going on, this and that, catching up on the kids, our son had prom last night, do you have any pictures, let's take a look, I just got into town, all those kinds of things. Now, had the kiss been different, oh man, even after 25 years, man, she lays one of those on me, I'm like rounding second base, heading to third, we're coming home on this deal, I'm just telling you, right? Yes, that is good, that is godly, that's the way it is supposed to be. And if we've got our kids who are making out and necking and all that stuff, man, they're around in second, they're sliding into third, they're coming home fast, guys and gals, parents. We've got to help protect their purity. We have to. We have to help them protect it. And so those are some things that I wanted to talk about when it comes to these foxes, whether you are dating or you are married. Last verse, this is what it says, the end of chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. This is all about a godly desire. This is what this lady says. My love is mine and I, I am his. He browses among the lilies before the dawn breeze blows and the night shadows flee. Return to me, my love, like a gazelle or a young stud on the rugged mountains. Woo! It's getting hot in here, is it not? Yes. What you think she is saying is what she is saying. This is a good and godly desire. This woman has felt sacred. She has felt special. She has felt protected. She has had intimacy with this man. He called her out, said, you sweet little dove, I want to hear your awesome little sweet voice. I want to see your beautiful face. And I want to have this conversation. I want to date you. And I want to get to know you. And guess what, guys? Now things are revved up for her. The greatest sexual organ on a woman is not her body parts. It is her mind, guys. It's her mind. When her mind starts thinking and feeling these things, it changes everything. Guys, it's just completely opposite for us. You know, we, a little breeze comes by and we're like, oh man, I'm excited. Ah, what are we, ah, right? Woo! But for a woman, it's her mind, her heart. She needs to know she's secure, she's sacred, she's taken care of, she's protected. And this lady says this. In the beginning of chapter three, she lays there and she talks about smelling his cologne. They've been on this date and she's probably like smelling her shirt. She's like, oh my gosh, that brute 44 he wears is awesome and manly. Oh my goodness. And she's dreaming about him. And, and then in the middle of the chapter, she says, do not arouse or awaken to the time is right. Even in the midst of this courting and dating and she's been loved and cared and sacred, she's not gonna cross the timeline because she's a woman of honor. She says, nope, I'm going to wait. Even though I feel like this, and if you're single and dating and you have these feelings, like the RPMs are revving up, I want you to know that is good and godly. It's okay. I was raised in a church where you didn't talk about this stuff, and these kids of ours, they have these hormones and feelings. We've got to talk about it with them, church. We have to. Yes, is it uncomfortable? Yes. Is it awkward? Yes. But we have to talk in about it in such a way that it is good and it is godly and that we want to protect this for you with everything that we have as parents and as part of the church and walk with them in this because it's hard is it not I used to be 18 too I used to be a high schooler and made some really poor choices and it's something I never talked about with my parents never we've had some of our friends they have said to Hannah and I you guys are so open with your kids I'm like yep we are I don't want to be a parent and look back and say I wish I'd have said more I wish I'd have spoken in more into the, my life's kids I just, I can't live like that. We have to have these conversations. And so if you need resources in parenting, Jim Burns, write this name down. Jim Burns is his name. Uh, his whole ministry for his whole life is coming alongside parents in the church and how to help have these conversations. He's got a ton of resources. I'm going to post some stuff on social media uh, for you as well. Uh, so parents, you need to have these conversations sooner than later uh, with your kids because this desire, it's good and godly, but it's got to be in the right uh, time. And the right time is in the bounds of marriage. Okay. So homework for you this week. Number one, ask your spouse, how can I encourage you if you didn't ask your spouse this week? Number two, I want you to go on a date. I don't care if you go eat ice cream. I don't care if uh, today, Hannah and I, I'm going to fertilize the backyard because that's what old married couples do. I'm going to fertilize the backyard, pray it's going to rain. Uh, and then she's going to work on the chemicals in the hot tub. And then we're going to sit on the patio and just hang out for a few hours together. That's what our afternoon, that's going to be our date. Date doesn't have to be a dinner and a movie. It doesn't have to be a five-star hotel. Uh, Dating is spend intentional time with one another without your kids. So you can be intimate. You can draw each other out and say, I want to hear your sweet voice and I want to see your beautiful face and have those moments together. So that is the art of dating. Are you guys ready to go date? 
Okay, I am. I'm ready to go date. Maybe you're not. All right. Okay, so I'm going to pray, and then uh, we're going to move into the next part of our service. Uh, Lord God, we love you. Thank you for today. Thank you for the art of dating that is taught in the Song of Solomon. It is the song of all songs. It's the greatest love song ever, Lord, and you've given it to us. Uh, you, through Holy Spirit, gave uh, King Solomon the wisest man ever, is what Scripture says. And you've given this to us as a, a template, an outline to follow, Lord. And your plans are so much greater and better than ours. And Lord, uh, I pray for our, all the married people who are in the room or on, online, Lord, that they would find time to date one another this week. Lord, carve out time to be intimate with one another so they could hear each other's hearts and hear each other's sweet voices, uh, Lord. And it's not about uh, anything physical. It's about just being with each other, growing that relationship uh, in a way that's going to honor you. And God, I pray for all of our single people, anyone who's in the room who is single or online single. I pray for our students, God. I just pray for purity. Lord, the things that they are feeling, Lord, these are natural, those are good, those are ungodly, but there is a, there's a time that you have designated for those, and it is in the bounds of marriage. And so, Lord, I just pray for them. Give them strength. Give us parents courage to have the hard conversations. Uh, I pray for us as parents to make some hard decisions, Lord. Uh, where their curfew may be earlier or people they hang around. And just, Lord, there's just a lot of challenges for us as parents to put them in a place where they can win in the area of purity. And so, Lord, I pray that our students, our kids hear that, that our heart is, is for them and it is not against them, God. And so may we raise up young men and women that are going to be uh, mighty men and mighty women that are going to build and grow your kingdom, that are going to honor you in all that they do. Uh, and so we just give this to you today, Lord. We love you and we trust you. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. All right, so uh, communion, two stations here, two here, and that's a time for you to remember what Christ has done for you through his death, his burial, and resurrection. Uh, our worship team, they're going to lead another song. Uh, Hannah and I will be here in the back of the room, and if you want uh, prayers about uh, your marriage, your relationship, we'd love to pray with you and for you with that. Also, as you begin to talk about foxes in your vineyard, and they're eating these little blossoms, um, you may need some help along the way, and this church is here to walk with you. Um, I do counseling, Caleb does counseling, uh, pastoral counseling. We have a list of counselors that we can refer to you. And listen to me, there is nothing wrong. Actually, the Bible says that it is good for you to have uh, counsel of the wise. Okay? There's like this bad stigma like, oh, you're going to counselor, you must be a freak or something's wrong with you. No, you're just wise. If your car's not working right or you need it, tires rotated or oil change, what do you do? You take it to the mechanic and they do maintenance. What if you spent time doing maintenance on your marriage? Maintenance. Yeah. And so if you need help or you need direction, that I would love to refer. We've got some great counselors that we have relationships with that are fantastic at what they do. And there is absolutely no shame at all to ever ask for help in your marriage and say, you know what, I think we need some help in some next steps. So as we talk about these vineyards and these foxes, some of this could come up. We want to be a resource for you. So please, please, please let us know if we can help in that. So they're going to lead us in worship. Afterwards, we're going to have a baby dedication, then a baptism. Uh, since the baptistry is up, I want to make that opportunity available for you. If you are here with us and you've never been immersed into Christ, you've never been baptized, this is your public declaration to Christ, to the world, saying, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. If you want to step into the waters of baptism today, oh man, please let me know. We'd love to make that available to you too. And uh, these next few moments are for you and for your family.
claim your own Come to reap what you have sown All creation weeps and groans for you It's to you that we belong It's to you we lift our song How our spirits look and long for you Your brilliant shape the brightest day With your voice like in the seas Wielding swords and stars and keys Bring the nations to their knees We pray Come Lord Jesus From age to age the same Jesus faithful is your name and true So until the sun does rise Till your trumpets rent the skies Help us keep our restless eyes on you seat and we've got three families that are dedicating some kiddos today so families come on up all right come on up yep yeah, we've got the uh, the fosters we've got the medinas and then we've got the Shrotlands. so come on up down here in the front these awesome beautiful babies yep so uh let's see uh, for, where's the slides at? You got the slides of the pictures? Yeah, here we go. Awesome. So uh, Coleman Kent Foster and then Titus Michael Foster are being dedicated by um, the uh, Foster family. So you guys are going to stand over here. You got them in a certain order. All right. And then they've got a big sister, Jojo. Awesome. Are you a good big sister for the boys? Yeah? I hear you're an awesome big sister. That's so cool. Okay. Uh, next one we have is Marley Oakley Medina and uh, Myla Marie Medina, and those are being dedicated uh, by the Medina family. And so, uh, Caitlin and Chris, and excited uh, for you guys to be doing that. And by the way, she oversees Mops now, doing an amazing job leading our Mops. So ladies, uh, if you're looking to connect, she's our, our lady in charge of that, doing a great job with that. And then lastly is Ashley and Andrew Schrotland. They're gonna be dedicating Isabel Joyce Schrotland today. And um, we are so thankful that they're going to be do doing that as well. So uh, I'm just going to read uh, a little bit uh, to you guys uh, as parents. And today is not a, it's not about salvation. Uh, this is about setting apart these kids uh, to be uh, 
taught and trained under the ways of the Lord. And really, this is not really a baby dedication more than is this kind of a parent affirmation. And uh, I want you to know uh, you guys have a great work ahead of you, and God has gifted these kids to no other parent but you. And so those days when you may doubt, am I a good mom or dad, or we have absolutely no idea what we're doing, uh, remember this. God gave these kids to no other parents but you. And he's trusted you with them. And I want you to know you're going to do an amazing work. So children, they're a gift from God. Psalm 127.3 says that the sons are a heritage from the Lord. Children are a reward for him. As believers, we're called to recognize that children belong first and foremost to God. God in his goodness gives children as gifts to parents. And not only they have this awesome responsibility for caring for this gift, but also the wonderful and privilege of enjoying it. Parents, I want you to enjoy every season. Even when you're in the midst of diapers and tears and no naps and all those things, I enjoy it because one day there's not going to be any of those moments anymore. So enjoy every season. Because the children uh, is going to be given back to the Lord today, it is proper and appropriate that uh, we share some scripture with that. We're told in 1 Samuel that Hannah presented Samuel back to the Lord. In Luke chapter 2, we read that Mary and Joseph, they brought Jesus to the temple uh, and present him to the Lord. And today we're going to do the same. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 7, excuse me, 4 through 7 says this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And these commandments I give you today to be put upon your hearts. Listen, parents, it says this. Impress them on your children. Talk to them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. And when the age appropriate, you're going to start talking to them about what makes them attractive and what attractive qualities are they going to look for in a godly spouse. And what about dating and those things we talk today? Those conversations are coming. Ephesians 6 verse 4 says this, Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. Instead, bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. Parents, the work of the church is not to raise your kids. It's to enforce and support what you're already teaching them at home. And that's the kind of church that we want to be. We want to walk alongside you and help you. So, love God with every ounce of fiber of energy and teach your children to do the same. Parents, and as you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, your child will do that as well. I say often, it's not what's taught, it is what's caught. You have to model everything for them. They are watching. They are like little sponges. Even you think they don't know, like if mommy and daddy are having a bad day, even at this age, they know mommy and daddies are having bad days, okay? And so they're watching. So model everything that you desire for them. By coming forward today before God's God and his people, you're declaring your desire to dedicate yourselves and your child to the Lord. I now ask that you enter in the following commitment in the presence of God and his people so your child may walk an abundant life that Jesus offers. Do you parents vow, by God's help and in partnership with the church, to provide this child a Christian home of love and of peace, to raise him or her in the truths of God's instruction and discipline, and to encourage them to one day to trust Jesus as their Lord and Savior? If so, say we do. We do. We do. Awesome. Finally, church, I'm going to ask you to make a vow as well. There's an old proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. amen. That's right. Parents, you first have the responsibilities, but parents need help and support of the community. Do you traverse Christian church by God's help to be faithful in your calling as members of the body of Christ to help these parents to be faithful to God, to help teach and train their children in the ways of the Lord so they might one day trust Him as Lord and Savior? If you accept this responsibility, say we do. Awesome. Throughout the Bible, anointing symbolizes a consecration unto the Lord. Anointing serves as a dedication that sets you apart for a special purpose in the Lord's kingdom. And parents are encouraged to anoint their children as a pronouncement of blessing upon their lives and pray for peace as well as protection. And so, uh, parents, uh, Desiree is our children's director. She is going to anoint your children's forehead today and say a blessing over you. And then we're going to finish with a word of prayer before the baptism. So, Desiree. All right. Hey, I'm going to say a prayer over the families really quick, and uh, then we'll move over to our baptism. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I just thank you so much uh, for the Shrotlands, the Medinas, and the Fosters. Uh, number one, their love for you. And secondly, Lord, we pray for wisdom and unity in their marriage um, uh, for parenting. God, parenting is not for sissies. It is a hard work, God, but it is a great work. And so I just pray that you would unify them in the direction and how to model um, 
Christ in the lives of their kids and how they talk to one another, how they date one another, uh, how they invite people into their home as an act of hospitality, how they go to work and provide for their families, every area of their life, God, would they just seek you out. And God, I pray for these kids, Lord, would you keep Satan from them? They are precious, Lord. They are precious. And Lord, give us the wisdom as the church how to come alongside and encourage what they are already doing in their homes and in the, where they work and where they live in their play. And Lord, I just pray that you raise up mighty men and mighty women in these kids, that they would uh, surrender their lives completely and fully to you, Lord, um, uh, as they grow old, as they walk uh, with you and walk with their family. So we give them to you. We trust you. We love you. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. All right, let's give these parents a round of applause. All right, turn your attention over here. We're going to have a baptism. Come on over here. And this is uh, Katie Reeves. Awesome. How are you doing, girl? Good. Can I tell you how proud I am of you? Yes, can we stall until the, yes, the kids get in here. Okay, so, uh, so there was a, a pastor, a rabbi, and a bishop in a bar. And uh, No, just kidding. I can tell a joke. <laughs> Come on in, kiddos. So just to let you know, anytime we do have baptisms, we always bring the kids in here because we're modeling this for them. We want them to see what it looks like for someone to uh, confess Christ as Lord and Savior and, and baptism. Um, I grew up in the church, so I've seen literally hundreds of baptisms, but for some, uh, they may have, have never seen this before, and it really sparks some great conversations uh, for you parents about what is baptism. Uh, parents, I encourage you to share your, your baptism story with your kids. Uh, kids, ask your parents about that. All right, I'm going to pull it up. One of the things uh, that we do um, is, uh, as we study, uh, Katie has been talking to her mom and dad for several weeks and months now about baptism, and she's been driving this awesome conversation about that, and uh, so you guys have been doing some study together, and Katie, I asked you three questions, and your dad or mom typed these out, and si you typed these out. Well, thank you for correcting me. I appreciate that. <laughs> Katie typed these answers out. I forget, kids type nowadays. We just wrote when we were kids. You guys type everything. So this is what it says. I ask her this first question. How did you come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And Katie, you typed this. My mom and dad, is it Nana? Is that how you, N-A? Nina? Nana? Nana. Nana, excuse me, Nana. I want to get the grandparents. And Nana always bring me to church, and my dad brings me to youth group so I can learn to be more like Jesus. And I got to know him. I asked him into my heart. Second question I ask you is, how has Jesus changed your life? Katie, this is what you wrote. Jesus has changed my life by helping me with my problems and giving me patience and being nice to my brothers. I think the jury may be out on that one sometimes. Just kidding, no. He also kept everyone together when Uncle Caleb had COVID. That's right. And then number three, I ask you, why did you want to get baptized today? And you said this, to show the world that I love Jesus. And that is so awesome. And so, uh, Katie, I'm going to uh, take your confession uh, and I just want you to repeat after me. I believe, I believe Jesus, is Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, the living God. And, I my life to him and I commit my life to Him as Lord and Savior. As Lord and, Savior. and we all said, yes. Amen. All right. Hey, your mom and dad are going to baptize you. And so, uh, Katie, if you want to jump in here, what you're going to do is you're going to put your, go ahead, put your feet in the water. And then, uh, Marsh and Curtis, do you guys want to say anything to Katie publicly before you do the baptism? Mom does. All right, so Katie, go ahead and have a seat, and then Curtis is going to be on one side, and then Marsh is going to be on the other, and um, so Katie, based on your confession of Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your mom, are, they're going to, your mom and dad are going to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Katie, pinch your nose, yep, and then grab her wrist, and then you guys can put her down. Yes, and amen. All right. Hey, thank you for joining us today, whether you're on-site or online. Uh, after service, uh, we had a couple of families that were supposed to help us tear down today, but due to illness or scheduling, we're not available. I'm looking for three or four families that would be willing to stay today to help the staff get things torn down so we can go home as well. So if you're available to do that, Caleb is in the back. Please let him know. And uh, you guys, uh, I want to remind you, we exist to help as many people cross over from death to life into Christ. You guys have a great week. God bless.